Hello friends, welcome to another painting video. I'm Raj and I love painting armies for the tabletop. Today we'll be adding some reinforcements to my grand heathen army and showcasing the airbrush technique that I use. I believe this is called nadural shading and it's basically the opposite of the zenithal highlight. Zenithal is frequently the first thing you're doing to a model, spraying a white or light color from the top. For the nadural shading, you're doing it towards the end of the process. You're spraying from the bottom and you're using a darker color. Pretty simple. The advantage here is you can shade a lot of different colors at once. Let's follow the process on these heathens. First step is getting your base coats down. You want to choose brighter colors for the best result. If we're thinking of mid-tones and highlights, I would actually say choose something closer to the highlight, like one, one pip below. The gradient we get from the shading is gonna kind of establish both the shadow and the mid-tone, I would say. So I just did basic base coats here, and you might be wondering, could you use contrast for this step? Absolutely. I took that approach on some recent goblins and chaos dwarves I painted up, contrast first, then moved on to the nadural shading, and yeah, it was a very good result. Two goblinoid thumbs up. With the models base coated, we're ready to use that airbrush. For the shade mix, I'm using two drops of just uh, thinner, three drops of Agrax Earth Shade, and one drop of Scale 75 Black Leather. Love that color. So this is the original recipe that I used when I started this project years ago, and I want these guys to match. Knowing what I know now, I would recommend one part paint to four or five parts of thinner. Don't get the agrax mixed in. Capturing this on video is quite tricky for a couple reasons. First off, we're coming from below, so I've got to tilt the model on its side. Hard not to block the camera with my hand. The second reason is this is a very thin mix, very watery. You really gotta take it easy with the throttle. But I like it this way for two reasons. First, it's a lot harder to gum up the needle. I usually do 10, 15, 20 models at a time here. So you'll, you'll still have to wipe it down from time to time, but I can usually get through without any issues. The second thing is when it's really watered down like this, I can sort of hone my targeting. I start with a very light touch where it's just slowly building up the shade. If I'm not hitting the right spot, I adjust my aim. And once I'm in the right spot, then I'll give it a little more juice on the airbrush. The downside is if you throttle it too much, you can end up with too much moisture on the model and kind of blow it around. So that's no good. So I'm primarily hitting the models from below. If you have a big base, that can actually interfere with this. So keep that in mind. At certain spots though, I do tilt the model up and hammer it from the side once I'm sure where I want all my shadows to go. I'm using an Infinity CR Plus with a 0.15 tip, pretty much smallest you can get. Can you use something bigger? Uh, I don't know, maybe. I've got an Awada Eclipse, which I think has a 0.35 standard. I didn't feel that this really worked with that. I would just blast the whole model. Now that said, my tip on the CR Plus here is bent. So maybe it doesn't need to be a, a perfect 0.15, a, a 0.2 or a, a 0.25 might work for you. If you're wondering about the wire attached to my airbrush here, that's for uh, extra precision. It sticks out exactly one inch from the end of the airbrush. It helps me line up where my little paint poof's gonna go. And for the really tiniest precise poofs, I'll try to get it exactly one inch away from the model. If it's bugging me for whatever reason, I can just bend it out of the way. But usually I just leave it on there. Now this is the first of two airbrush coats that we're gonna do. This mix ends up with a kind of a dirty look, but even if you're shooting it straight on, it's not gonna get that dark. For that, we're gonna have to load up something closer to black. This is five drops of thinner, five drops of Nuln oil, one drop of black leather, and one drop of black. I try to avoid going completely black on anything with my models. So this pass is a lot quicker. We're just gonna be hitting the big shadowed areas and really giving them some depth. So that's about it with the airbrush. Let's take a look at some before and afters. 
So you can see the effect is sweetest on those big open areas. Looks pretty nice on folded cloth though too. Depending on the pose of the model though, you might not be able to hit certain areas quite the way you like. You might have to manually apply the shading as we shall see. Depending on your level of quality you're shooting for, I think you could definitely call these good if you were so inclined. They look pretty snazzy from a few feet away, but I do like to do those details, so let's jump in on that. We'll usually finish off the skin first at this point. I do a wash of 50-50 Drucci Violet and Lamian Medium to get in those nooks and crannies. The natural shading actually does quite a good job of getting into those cracks, depending on the angle. But I'm looking for a little more contrast on those sausage fingers. After the wash, we'll hit her with a highlight. And if you really got the airbrushing just right, this will be all you need. One mistake is to kind of just keep going and overdoing the shading. And if you do that, you might have to reestablish some of your base coat before moving on to the highlight step to get a good gradient there. I think we nailed it on this guy though. Just a few more boops. Boop, 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 boop. Boop, boop, boop. Beep, 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 boo. If we're looking at the leather, we can see using a dark color to start with offers absolutely nothing with the natural shading. Do not do what I did here. Use a lighter brown. I only use the dark brown here because that's what I've done on every other model in the Heathen Army and I want these guys to match. But since I use the dark color, I need to basically kind of work these up from scratch manually with uh, traditional highlighting techniques. If you'd used a really light brown, you probably could have just done that same purple wash you'd use for the skin and then just a little bit of spot highlighting and called it good. I do the black lining manually on these. You could do this step before the natural shading with contrast paint, washes, or manually, but, but like I said before, the natural shading does get into a lot of those cracks, so it kind of saves you some trouble, in my opinion, to do it after. So on the blue archer here, we have a good example of where the natural shading can't hit, and that's on the arm pulling back. The bowstring. We're going to use a little bit of the base color mixed in with the black leather and this is going to be super thin down just to apply light glazes to sort of match the natural shading levels and kind of build it up until we're happy. For these white wraps around the calves and shins I'm going to call them good actually. Trying to highlight them is probably just going to get me in trouble. All I'm going to do on the lady here is try to get the color up to match the other leg. No worries there. You'll find you'll probably have to do that from time to time unless you're a master airbrusher. Finally, we get to those big pieces of cloth. Originally, I didn't highlight them any further, depending on your standards. You know, they might be good enough, but I actually played some games with them and just didn't like how they looked. So I went back, applied a, a slight highlight, and that was it. I felt that that was what they needed. If these were armor plates, all we'd have to do would be an edge highlight. It's a little different with the cloth, so we kind of got to make those edges ourselves. And I, I really mean that. We want to leave like 95% of the cloth untouched. The more you try to tinker with it, the more you're, you're going to regret it. You're going to lose the majesty of the sweet airbrush fade. So we're just going to work the color up a bit more on those untouched areas. Working the folds and edges when we can. I'm using the base color that I started with plus a little bit of pale skin from scale 75. This is a off-white pinkish color and it's what I use for the brightest highlights on the skin. All right, I'll finish a few more details off screen here and then we'll take a look at the final results. So certainly the extra highlights and elbow grease we put into highlighting those details really make the models pop. As for highlighting the main pieces of cloth, you know, the main colors, I'll leave that up to you on whether you thought it was worth it or not. That step doesn't really take that long, so for me, I think it's worth it. 
from here I'm gonna get these guys based we'll get some shots of them out in the wild and then I'll give you a couple thoughts on where I think you can take it from here here's the latest batch lined up with some of the old crew you can see the natural shading gives them all a cohesive look even though there's no uniforms you know they're all different colors if you've never heard of this technique before hopefully you get some juices flowing for you if you give it a shot definitely post a link to your results below i'd be keen to see it and if you're having trouble with anything let me know. I'm by no means an airbrush expert, but I don't think this technique is that complicated. It's pretty easy to wrap your head around, and it's a good way to take your airbrush skills from that basic level to sort of an intermediate level, I would say. So hopefully you found the video helpful. Please give it a like or comment if you did. I don't do these very often, so if you want to see more, you're going to have to let me know. All right. See you, folks. Zaga! like to see more saga content consider joining the heathen army over on patreon or popping on down to the saga doors day discord server links below thanks guys